Where were you when that thing happened? Do you remember that thing? I'm intentionally being vague and not actually referencing something because you most likely will remember something. You'll go, oh, he's talking about that. And it's only because of the way that I phrased that question. But it did call up memories, which if you think about it, is friggin amazing. But how? Hi folks, it's Falcon. And today on Waste Time, we ask the question, how does our brain store memories? Memory is a wide range of phenomena, from simple recognition of a face or a logo or letters that create words, to complex recollection of events that happened exactly how, what order, etc, etc. Memory is amazing. And before we go into it, it's important to know that there is no one single memory structure. There isn't like a hard drive or a central library or anything like that. It's this big, weird biological mess that manages to work better than anybody else's big, weird biological mess in their head. I mean, human memory is pretty amazing. But keep in mind that animals also have something resembling it. It's not necessarily the same thing, but their brains work very similarly. It's important to note that we're only going to talk about human memory, but being it's probably the most complex version of memory on Earth, and it's ours, that's the one that makes sense to talk about. So there's two kinds of memory, short-term memory and long-term memory. Short-term memory is pretty important in order to get anything done at all. Most things are a process and one needs to know where they are in that process, so at every moment they need to remember what they're doing and how much of it they've done already. For instance, let's say you're playing a turn-based strategy game on the computer. At every given moment you have to remember the state of everything that's going on. What did your opponent do during their turn? Where where are all of their units? Okay, I've made a decision as to what move I intend to make. Now I have to remember it until I make that move. It's a constant loop that needs to constantly be fulfilled in order for you to have some semblance of idea what the state of everything around you is. If you didn't have short-term memory, you basically wouldn't know anything going on around you. Everything would just be a really weird blur. And it's also possible that you wouldn't have any long-term memories either on account short-term memory is what's converted into long-term memory. There's an area deep in the brain called the hippocampus, and no, it is not like a college for hippopotamuses or a university if you're, you know, fancy. No, it's simply an area of the brain called the hippocampus. But now you have a very, very good mnemonic device. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you do. Look at all those hippos going to college. <laughs> so basically what happens is the short-term memory is, for lack of a better term, played back in the hippocampus. And believe it or not, a long-term memory is kind of an aggregate of a bunch of small, short-term memories. You have a short-term memory of how you felt, of what you saw, of what you ate or touched or smelled. Essentially, a lot of different sensory short-term memories are aggregated into a single long-term memory. Basically, the hippocampus takes this fully formed aggregate memory and creates connections between neurons that are eventually fixed in place. It's important to remember that this is not immediate that they are fixed in place and essentially saves it as, for lack of a better word, data. Now, I'm not saying that this is done in some sort of binary arrangement like actual data, because honestly, I don't know. But the way these neuron combinations eventually are fixed essentially acts as an index for the aggregate, and as one recalls that specific memory, the index specifically calls different parts of the brain. If you're observing a brain scan of somebody recalling something, different areas of the brain are clearly active. What's interesting is the way that this memory is stored, the combinations of different neuron connections, is that they can actually be dependent on arrangement of molecules. Memory is actually aggregated on a molecular level. Knowing how small a molecule is, which is unfathomably small, you literally can't understand it by human perception. You need tools to. It's fair to say that there's quite a bit of storage space on your brain hard drive. But as much as that is a strength, it can also be a weakness. Biologically speaking, the material that we store memory in is just like anything else in our bodies. It's organic. It's carbon-based. And it can break down. 
Being things are being done on a molecular level, any small amount of breakdown could easily corrupt or even eliminate a memory altogether. When one considers the fact that it is operating on such a tiny level, and that the brain is constantly rewriting what is going on, it has to rewire itself on a constant basis on account the human body, the human person, the human being has to constantly adapt to a changing world. Again, this is both a huge strength and a huge weakness. Unfortunately, it makes perception and memory fallible, but it's also what makes personality, the expression of our experience and our interpretation of the world, possible. It is this imperfection that I would say is what makes us human, and it's not all entirely rooted in memory. However, without this type of memory, without this way of doing things, it wouldn't be possible. It's also possible the brain never actually forgets anything. Like I said, memory storage happens on a molecular level. It is tiny in scale, so we don't really exactly know what the phenomena of forgetting something actually is. It could be that the brain drops the data because it deems it no longer important, or it could be that the data has been accessed so many times or rewritten or changed in some way that it can't properly be recalled. The data is corrupted. There's still a lot that we don't understand, however, we do understand the difference between long and short term memory and how it is interpreted to create long term memory, which essentially creates reality for us. Perception without memory would just be a non stop stream of unstored input. And I'll say it again before we stop, memory is amazing. What do you think? Do you have an interesting memory or an interesting thought about memory that you just remembered and want to share? Leave it in the comments for us. Also, if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please click the like button. If you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos all the time and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. And we'll see you next time, right here on Waste Time.